blessed Tuesday morning, everybody. Remember to vote if you haven't done it yet. You still have until I think like 8 p.m. today. Yeah, 8 p.m. today to get that ballot in. It's part of, um, we're Christian, but we're also citizens. And so we are called to that vocation as well. So I, I hope and pray that you exercise your, that, the vocation of citizen today. And if you miss this opportunity, the general election is going to be here before we even know it. Um, God bless your discernment and um, God bless this process. So in, uh, as we gather in morning prayer, we gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ and your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angels be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. We continue with our devotion as we dwell in the word this morning and are challenged a little bit as well satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love O god that we may rejoice and be glad all our days praise to the blessed and holy trinity one god who gives us life salvation and resurrection christ is risen he is risen indeed alleluia Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Breathe, 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 breathe in and out. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born, oopsies. I'm going too fast here. There we go. I'm jumping the gun a little bit, we got following Jesus in the middle here. You throw me off by half an hour and I, I mess up. It's not too bad though. That was a little foretaste of the feast to come. So as we wrap up today, the section on this, from this book on the challenge of loving our neighbor, loving our neighbor, loving our enemy, in general, just loving is a challenge. We, yesterday we talked about some concrete acts of forgiveness and service that we can do. So today we, we listen to what Nowen has to wrap up this, this section on challenge. Following Jesus is a movement away from just wandering around or just sitting there. A lot of us live a life in which we do a lot of wandering, physical wandering or mental wandering in many directions, or we sit there not knowing what to do with our life. There is a certain fatigue there. Following Jesus means moving in the right direction. Suddenly we know where we are going and our lives take on a more regular pattern and we need more focus. Following Jesus also means something other than being drawn into a movement, even a good one. It can be a very good movement because we can find some help there for our emotional life. But following Jesus is not just about finding a way to handle our emotions or ourselves. It is a different movement. It is in fact a letting go of our worldly self to find our true self in Jesus. And contrary to popular opinion, we are not called to imitate Jesus. We are called to form a community of people who through the, through different ways reflect the great love of Jesus. No one of us can reflect the fullness of that love. Therefore, following Jesus means something different for each of us. There are many forms and shapes in this pursuit. The exciting thing about Christian community is that we have so many ways to be a disciple. We can be an activist or a contemplative. We can embody both. There are different ways we can live out God's love. Some of us are very passionate. Others are more quiet and hardly noticeable. Following Jesus does not mean to be carried by Jesus either. Hmm. Following Jesus does not mean that Jesus picks us up from the ground. Sometimes we say, I follow Jesus, so everything is fine. Or I have prayed to Jesus and you'll be fine. 
But as many of us know, it's not that simple. Sometimes there are there is an eagerness in us and or around us to be to turn Jesus into a problem solver. We think he will solve our problems. And if all our problems are not solved, we don't have enough faith. This is not really Jesus' intent. At least that is not what is in the gospel. Jesus is not there to give us, get us out of hot water. He is not the cure-all for all our difficulties. Jesus is not the end of the hard times in our lives. That is not what Jesus is. To follow Jesus means that we do, we do the walking. We are the ones doing the talking, living life, getting involved. We are the ones struggling, the ones who need to work hard. Jesus, in a way, does not take away the difficulties of our journey. I even dare to say following Jesus means everything changes while everything remains the same. You know very well that followers of Jesus, disciples, are people who live real human lives. The work of life does not come easier to them because they are disciples. Life, as many of us know, can actually become more difficult, more painful when we choose to follow Jesus. Yet at the same time, we can gain a certain strength because we no longer live our life or our agony alone. We no longer live our struggle in isolation. We no longer live our pains as if nobody cares. Indeed, following Jesus means walking in his path, taking steps behind the one who shows us the way in our dark, broken, painful world. Following Jesus means to live our life in companionship with the one who understands us fully. Companion, from the old French, companion, I think, literally means one who breaks bread with another, based on the Latin com, together with, and panis, bread. Following Jesus means a life of communion with a guide. It makes an enormous difference whether we struggle alone or together. To know that our life is still a struggle, but no longer a lo lonely struggle, is a new experience entirely. Following Jesus makes life very different and very new. When we walk with Jesus, we can know that we have a fellow traveler, someone with us, Jesus is God with us, the one who can we can trust with our whole life, the one who shows us the way. So a little reflection on this last chapter, of course, of our wandering, we, how we wander both mentally and physically, and, and even we talked to, we've talked about some of those idols that we kind of put forward sometimes as our gods and where we put our trust and our hope and how it's not about just finding and following the most the easiest path or the most hip path pat right now path right now or a movement is not a gospel um the social gospel is kind of a misnomer in a way um because the gospel is a person the gospel is christ and um now one doesn't quite get there at the end here he talks about jesus being our fellow traveler someone with us that we can trust our whole life to and who shows us the way. We would also add John 14, um, I, am, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He not just shows us the way, he makes the way. He is the way back to relationship with God, back to um, forgiveness and grace and mercy, free gifts that are ours because God in Christ Jesus came to do what we couldn't imitate. We couldn't die for our enemies and save them from um, the wrath of God and the, the just punishment from their actions, our actions. Um, we couldn't with our death or our life um, be that grace in the same way that Christ is. But because Christ did that, we can be poured out in such a way that also shares that word with our enemies and our friends and creates new opportunities, new life, because Christ also abides in us. And Christ also uses us to share that word with our enemies and our friends and, um, and everybody in between.
I do like the part that Jesus is not our genie, right? It doesn't say genie, but Jesus is not the one that gets us out of hot water. He's not the one that um, is our big problem solver. I mean, the, he solves the biggest problem of, of our rebellion from God and all the repercussions of that. Um, but we still have complete freedom in what we do in our daily lives. And we mess that up a lot because um, it's a challenge because we are um, broken. And Jesus doesn't come to just say, okay, I'm going to pluck you out of this and I'm going to put you up on all your individual mountaintops so that you can be at peace and have a contemplative life and never interact with anybody else that will, that will cause you to sin. Well, he doesn't do that for one because we are social creatures and we need one another, even when we drive each other insane, um, even when we frustrate one another, we need each other but also because God doesn't take us out of the world, he brings us back to it. But freed from the fear of the power of death, the devil, the power of evil, the power of even death, at least the ultimate power, the penultimate realities still exist of suffering and death, but the ultimate power belongs to Christ alone. So we do struggle and Christ does walk with us. And I would say sometimes for us in turning us around when we're going in the wrong direction. That is after all, repentance and forgiveness is turning us around. Um, but we need to live this life of ours. Christ doesn't live it for us. We have it because of God. It's redeemed because of God but we're the ones that live it. Christ can't do that for you. And then the nuances of, of the good that we do is from God. So yes, God does put us into contact with our neighbors and helps us sometimes get out of our way enough to actually help one another. But um, Christ comes to us in the bread and the wine as forgiveness in our baptism to give us an identity and an inheritance and um, is with us all the days of our life because he is the way and when we need when the day finally comes where we close our eyes on christ christ will come and bring us to that last journey that we can't go by any means without christ and bring us to, to the full presence of God. In the meantime, the gospel is a person. And the gospel is a person who we can speak into um, the hearts and the minds of all around us. And it can be spoken into us. Which that God has chosen that way to proclaim the gospel is curious. But it is also freeing. So now it ends this chapter with a prayer, so let us pray. Lord Jesus, free me from the many things that occupy and preoccupy me. Help me just to be with you, to pray with you, glorify you, thank you, worship you. I want to be more attentive, attentive, more ready to hear you, more willing to understand the mystery of your birth and life, your dying and rising. Make me still, Lord. Make me quiet and speak to me in that silence. Amen. We continue our morning devotion with our beautiful day in the neighborhood. I hope it's a beautiful day in yours. And today's poem is called, This is Just the Day. If you've got an hour, now, the time to, now is the time to share it. If you've got a flower, wear it. This is just the day. If you've got a plan, now is the time to try it. If you've got an airplane, fly it. This is just the day. It's the day for seeing all there is to see. It's a day for being just you, just me. If you've got a smile, now is the time to show it. If you've got a horn, then blow it. It's the minute to, be, it's the minute to begin it. This is just the day. What is on your list today to
to do and to embrace and enjoy. Let's see if I can get back. Sorry, everybody. There we go. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. Thank you for the balance of what you have created and the, the seasons that come to mark time and place for the beauty of a new day and the possibilities therein because you have created a new day and have given it to us to live. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of um, those who we will interact with today. And thank you with, for those who prepared the food that we have had, will have today, the homes that we rest within, and provide for those who don't have it this day, for the inequity and the lack of resources despite an abundance in our world. May you give all enough for the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness. We thank you for the ability to hope for healing and forgiveness. The, your work on the cross for our, us so that we could not just receive that forgiveness ourselves, but give it away. We ask you to heal our world that's being ravaged by COVID-19. We ask you to work and show the way, be the way for those who are working on the vaccines and plans for, for security and for reopening of schools somehow, some way, create new life and new possibilities healing for families that are strained and stressed because of this challenging time. For those who have fevers and sniffles and other symptoms, we ask you to bring peace as they wait for test results and peace as they receive them. May you be with all those caring for the sick and the weary and the restless and the bored and remind and give light to the new day that you give each day. For the gift of relationships with others, we pray. We know this is a time of straining of relationships, Lord, in many ways, either for, from atrophy of not being able to be together or from constantly being together and, and having that stress as well. Breathe life into relationships who now, this far into this strange time, are fraying a little bit more, are struggling and, and need your breath of life mend and heal, bring hope and joy, and protect all those who are in need. For the communion of faith in your church, we pray. Thank you for your living water that flows into us and gives us your grace each day. Continue to bring that living water into our lives and overflow it into the lives of those around us. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Jesus Christ, our living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world, for President Trump and Vice President Pence, for all those who are 
serving in DC or returned home on Senate break. We pray for Governor Inslee and all of the, our local government here in Washington. We pray for our primary elections that are due today and for the, the process of an election um, here in Washington and throughout our country that your promise for a good government, it extends also into, into the voting process so that the voices of as many as can be are heard. We ask you to be with our local officials as well from cities and counties. May you bring them your vision and your forgiveness. People in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, we pray, may your light shine in all the darkness in the world and overcome that darkness. For all who work for peace and international harmony, we pray, may we rejoice in moments of peace. May, may we name them and, and shout them out from the mountaintops and then the valleys so that others can also learn to recognize and learn to work for peace as well. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we pray, thank you for the gift that you have given us in the creation and help us to continue to learn to care for it. And for the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, we give you thanks. May we continue to boldly proclaim your word of law and gospel to the ears of all those who need to hear it. Help us, Lord, reach more people. Help us bring more um, of our neighbors and those we don't know into our body of Christ through the proclamation and the sharing of the word so that all might know the gift that you have given of life and of forgiveness and of eternal life. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.